worship the beast, neither his image, neither had the mark his mark in their upon their heads, on their foreheads, on their on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, I want you to understand something. There are parts to the first resurrection. When the Bible talks about first fruits, Jesus was the first fruit. There were resurrections after Jesus. Even when Jesus was resurrected, there were people that were uh, dead folk, the graves were open, and they moved through the city. Wouldn't that be something? See some dead folk that you know? Hey, I thought you was gone. <laughs> Look what God can do. Amen. <clears throat> so God is going to raise up those that qualify for first fruits. Now, that ain't everybody. Again, everybody is not part of the church. Everybody is not part of the body of Christ. Now, I know this is going to be controversial. There are going to be some other people that you're going to say, how did they make it? There's more than a bride and a groom at a wedding. Yes. There's guests. There's relatives. They all didn't do the same thing, and they all don't have the same name. But they're there. They're just not. The, they just are not the bride and the groom. This is why you gotta be. You can't be so quick on judging what God gonna do to other people. Cause it's what God's gonna do. It's not what you're gonna do. You gotta let God be God. Amen. Listen. It says, "But the rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were finished." Now, those that those that are part of this first resurrection, we're gonna appear before God at the bema seat. That's where we. That's where uh, God judges us. Now, when He judges us, it's kind of like the Olympics. Okay, yeah. It's, it ain't judgment to damnation. This is like the Olympics. You don't get re uh, rewards and awards. Now, understand that some folk ain't gonna get. They gonna get a, a, a competing. Also, ran. They just made it. Made. The Bible talks about that they're. Uh, works being burned up by fire, but yet they, they themselves are saved. See, some of your works, you that's you, hey, him, that's you. You're doing it because that's what you want. Well, this is God be the glory. No, that's your glory. It ain't his. Now, you say, but you're, you're not going to be able to present that to God because it's going to be burned up. Because it ain't what God told you to do. I don't care how well you do it. If it's not what God told you to do, you wasting your time. It's called vain glory. Vain, vain. Everybody can give you a plot down here, but that don't mean you'll get one up there. It says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, wait a minute. They're going to be priests, and they're going to reign with him? You know who's part of that group? Me. You? Okay, keep your finger right there. Keep your finger right there. Go back to Revelation chapter number one. <clears throat> now, look, look at Revelation chapter one and verse number six. It says, and hath made what? Uh, Wait a minute, who's he talking to? This is the church. This is the church. And hath made us kings and what? Priest. And priests unto God. This is the church. Now, again, this is not Israel. This is the church. There's a difference between Israel, and this, this is where you wish you had more time than have a Bible study. This is the difference between Israel and the church. In Israel, I mean, in the, in the Old Testament, Israel is likened unto a harlot. Mm -hmm. He divorced her. Mm -hmm. she, she's a harlot. She's a, now, they don't mean don't love her. We call her a harlot. Now, and he divorced her. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a rule that a priest can't marry a divorced woman.
That's why the church is the bride of Christ. Israel is not the bride of Christ. You, they're not the same. They have two different destinies. One destiny is celestial. The other destiny is terrestrial. Now, for these folk running around here talking about, yeah, I'm going to be the head, not the tail. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. He was talking to the Israel as the head of the nations. The Gentiles will not be the head of the nations. Israel will be the head of the nations that God will rule from Jerusalem. Israel will be the head, not the tail. You got these crazy people running around there. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and be one. Because God has a greater position for me than that. Mm -hmm. I'm the bride. I'm, I'm going to be part of the bride of Christ. You, you, you. Mm -hmm. See, the, the church is not considered a, a, a divorcee. Mm -hmm. She ain't perfect, but she ain't no harlot. He's going to cover the church with his righteousness. I know, you ain't heard this a lot, right? Okay. That don't mean it ain't in it because you ain't heard it. All right, let me finish reading this in 6. And he hath made us kings and priests, and God and his God and His Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So he has made us kings, and he has made us priests. So you ought to thank God for that. Amen. All right. Well, we got to get back to, we gotta get back to uh, chapter number 20 again. All right. Let's look. It says, um, verse number five, but the rest of the dead live not again until, until the thousand years were finished. And this is the first resurrection. This is the end of the first resurrection. The first resurrection began with Jesus, and it is right here. It says, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but, but they shall be priests of God, and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So you want to you want to be part of the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. See, that's why uh, in, in St. John chapter three, when he told Nicodemus, "You have to be born again. If you're born twice, you die once. If you're born once, you die twice." That's a good enough reason to tell somebody why they must be born again. Okay, now. For people, now, we live in a day when people are talking about, you know, uh, the way I am, the way I am. Everybody talk about how they are. It doesn't matter how you are. There are certain things, man, I guess we can deal with this for a moment. We're going to have to deal with chapter 21 next time, okay? And part of chapter 20. Okay. Unless y'all just want me to just rush through it. Okay. Thank you. So, there are a lot of people say, you know, I was born this way. Now, there, were, there are some people, now, now listen to what I'm saying. There are some people that were born with a predisposition for alcoholism. Yes. Runs in the family. Yes. There are people that were born with a violent predisposition. It runs in the family. Yes. There are people that are born with a mental predisposition. Yes. Runs in the family. Yes. There are people that have a gay spirit running around in the family. Yes. Okay? So, I'm not going to argue with you the fact that you might have been born this way. You might have been born with a predisposition. But this is why Jesus said you must be born again. Because, mm. because we, we're, when we are the children of Adam, we have a fallen nature. Yeah. Yeah. Now, your nature may not be like mine. That's right. Born with it. I might like women. You might like men. You might like Jack. I might like Hennessy. Really, I ain't tasting either one. <laughs> But I'm just saying, you have something. Yeah. Everybody has something. This yeah. is why Jesus came to save that which was lost. So the, no. So what you have to do is it's a two it's a two phase process. First, you have to make Jesus your savior. You have to accept him as your savior. You have to accept him as your savior. Then after you accept him as your savior, you have to make Jesus Lord. Now, if you make him your savior and don't receive him as Lord, you're still going to be as lost as somebody that never accepted him as their savior. The Bible says, he that believeth, that word believeth in the Greek, don't stop. It means believing, believing, believing. Keep on believing, 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 believing. That's not a one point in time believeth. See, preachers got people thinking that you believe one day, one time, you good, 
Don't worry about nothing else. Go on out and do what you're going to do. You got you believe on him. As a, no. That believing is a continual believing. It don't stop. Does this make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, verse number seven takes us into the period where Satan is loosed. And so I'm, I'm going to stop there because what I would like to do is take, take an uh, intermission right here and go back and show you what's going to go on during the millennial, during that millennial reign. There's some things that are going to be reset. The, the, the lion is going to lay down mm, with the lamb. With the lamb. Mm -hmm. kids, kids playing with the snakes. Mm -hmm. Don't come my way with it, but <laughs> they're going to be able to do that. And it appears that those that are saved won't die. Not during the millennium. But there'll be some sinners. And if they die at age 100, they're going to say, oh, he, he died so young. Wouldn't it be something to die at age 100? So he died so young. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not, now a lot of people say, well, that's, that's not going to be any unrighteousness. Oh, yes, they will. He's going to rule with a rod. Mm -hmm. that, means, that means he's going to have strict enforcement. See, because you have AIDS, you, there are going to be some people that are in the millennium that still have a fallen nature. There will be people that made it out of the tribulation that still have a fallen nature. There will be some people that are born during the tribulation, during the millennium, I'm sorry, they made it out of the tribulation, they're in the millennium, there will be some people that are born during the millennium that have a fallen nature. And they still going to be sinners. Now, ain't they going to be saints? They're going to be sinners or they're going to be saints? But during this time, I shouldn't go much further. I'll say this and I'll be finished. During this time, the sacrificial system will be reinstituted. Mm -hmm. And the nations will go to Israel to learn how do we worship God. Mm -hmm. And if they don't make it, God say, oh, you know what, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to cut the rain from you. You don't have no rain. So it is something to look forward to, something to study, and I pray that you're with us when we open our Bibles again. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, all right. God bless you. Are there any questions? Now, don't, don't, don't ask something that I'm supposed to teach next week, because I ain't going to answer. Yes, sir. Me have brought out an interesting uh, uh, thought in the scripture where he said that it was written on his knee. On his leg. On his leg. On his thigh. Yes, yeah, she said, is that alluding to... Uh, have a tattoo? Have tattoo? No, no. Okay, now what you have to remember is uh, in, the, in the time that this is written, when a person came, when a person came in riding on an army, their standard or their banner showed on their thigh. It's, you know, while they're riding a the horse. It's kind of like a... Uh, uh, during this time when they wore their tunic, you could tell a person's station in life by looking at the clothes they wore. Mm -hmm. That bottom hem would tell you about them. Yes. That bottom hem would even tell you about their family. Mm -hmm. There was something about, and see, well, this is another discussion. This is why clothing is important, whether you want to believe it or not. When we talk about that woman saying, if I could touch the hem of his garment, mm -hmm. she knew that there was healing. The Bible talks about healing in his wings. That tassel that hung from his garment, mm -hmm. it said something. It said something. It represented a connection with God. It represented a covenant with God. So your clothing does say something about you and your relationship with God. I don't care what somebody else says. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, does, it, it has a significance to it. He's riding on the horse. Remember he talks about he's riding on the horse? Yeah. And he going, yeah. You're going to be able to see who he is. Even the Pope has a, some, a, a, a stole that he wears yes. that tells you about him. Now, you can't read that, but it tells you about him. It says, they can't just feel that Vice God. Vice <laughs> God. Yes, ma'am. This is not reference to what we discussed today. I watch different preachers. So, you know, I told you I watched the Rabbi Snyder. Rabbi mm -hmm. Snyder. Okay. So, he referenced to that when he was talking, he referenced that he as a Jew is, is one of the singled out Jews. Okay. 
So do Jews as a whole not believe Jesus is the Messiah and that's why he's singled out and what he believes? So is that what the Orthodox view is? They don't believe it. No. Jesus is the Messiah? No. And this, this, is, this is why there's going to have to be the last part of the tribulation is going to be the great tribulation because it's at that point that they're going to call Jesus. As at, at that point, orthodox, orthodox, as at that point, they're going to wake up and say, Lord, save us. But see, a whole lot will have died before, before that happened. I want you to understand something. Uh, Israel and Judaism is just like the church. There's only going to be a remnant that's going to be saved. Only a remnant. Everybody you see is going to church. Some just going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But only a remnant. So yeah, he is a, he is a mess messianic Jew. He has already accepted Jesus as their Messiah. But there's so many Jews that reject it. They don't accept it. But they will. They will understand who he is. They may not accept it, but they will. By the time we get to the last chapter, I'm going to show you how wicked men are. Even when they realize who God is, they're going to say, you know what? We don't care. We're going to fight you anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, if that ain't insane, I don't know what it is. But that's the type of, this is the type of world we live in where people don't care. They just don't care. You just thank God that you do because they don't.